Assalamu alaikum dear students, uh, welcome to Thin Film Technology course, uh, lecture number 14. I am Dr. Purvaz Ahmad. Uh, in this lectures, uh, we will continue the discussions on Thin Film uh, depositions and uh, we will explain in details uh, two types of the chemical vapor deposition techniques. Uh, the first one is called uh, atmospheric pressure chemical vapor depositions and the second one is called low pressure chemical vapor deposition techniques. So let's start the lectures. First of all, uh, we will have to look uh, different step and walls and a CVD uh, process. So just like you can see it here for yourself, we have a typical process that is uh, inside the CVD systems. We have a susceptor and that susceptor we have placed a vapors and we have shown a stepwise the process. I mean we have a gas stream and that gas stream we have shown different process. So we will discuss this process one by one. So first of all that you should remember that reaction rate may be eliminated, may be limited by uh, gas transport to form a surface. And surface chemical reaction rates, uh, they depend strongly on the temperatures. So let's explain the process. I mean, you see here, we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So let's explain each step uh, one by one. What is mean by step number one? Uh, it means that uh, we have transports of the reactants to the deposition regions. I mean, that is step number first. Uh, in step number second, we have transports of the reactants from the main gas streams to the boundary layer uh, to form a vapor surface. I mean, that is, uh, you can see it here. Uh, that is what actually we do and the uh, step number two that is we have transport of the reactants from the main gas streams through uh, the boundary layers to form the vapor surface then in step number three uh, we have adsorptions of the reactants on the vapor surface at step number four in pile uh, first we have surface reactions and these surface reactions, uh, it includes chemical depositions or reactions, surface migration to the attachment sites, uh, that is tanks and uh, ledges, uh, sites and corporations, and other surface reactions, uh, in which particularly we have emissions and uh, redepositions, uh, for example. And step number five, uh, we have desorptions of uh, byproducts. Uh, step number six, we have uh, transports of byproducts uh, through the boundary uh, layers. And at last, uh, step number five, uh, we basically have uh, transports of byproducts away from the deposition region. I mean, that is sometimes uh, we are utilizing the catalyst. So, that catalyst, when it's been utilized uh, during the synthesis process, and we want that to get out from the system so that normally occurs step number uh, seven that is we have transport of the byproducts uh, away from the deposition region i mean the, the catalyst uh, once it performs its reactions so it's been recovered from that reactions and it's been take away uh, it's been take away uh, to, uh, by by the gas stream uh, and that normally we utilize the argon or maybe some others uh, normal uh, gas or uh, uh, the inner gas uh, that basically transport uh, the byproduct away from the uh, deposition region. So th these are the sample steps that have been involved in a typical uh, chemical vapor deposition process. Uh, so, uh, uh, but just remember uh, that all these steps, uh, step, uh, step two to five are most important for the growth rate. I mean, here you can see that uh, step number two, uh, two to five, and that is uh, two to five transport of reaction from the man gas stream to the boundary layer to the vapor surface. Exertion of reaction on the vapor surface, uh, surface reaction including chemical uh, deposition or reaction, surface migration to the attachment sites, uh, incorporations and other surface reactions and desorptions of byproducts. I mean, these uh, process, they are most important for the growth rate. I mean, these steps, they are being conserved for the growth rate. Whereas uh, step three to five, three to five are closely related and can be uh, grouped together as surface reaction process.
So after, I mean, having a proper knowledge about, uh, I mean, uh, the step and was and uh, typical uh, chemical vapor deposition process, uh, then we discuss some further, uh, I mean, about uh, doffing and chemical vapor depositions. I mean, we can utilize a chemical vapor deposition technique to have doffing and a CVD growth film. I mean, we can utilize the CVD techniques to have dopings uh, and as grown film. I mean, we can deposit the, and we can not only deposit the thin film and CVD technique, but we can also have uh, doffing and CVD films. So, how we can do that? Uh, we remember doping is usually done uh, for epitaxials, that is single crystal film uh, during the film growth. We remember, let me repeat it again, doping is uh, usually done for epitaxial, uh, uh, which means that uh, this part a single crystal film uh, during the film growth. Dopant will be grown directly uh, onto crystalline site. That what it means, it means that no need of uh, dopant activations. Let me repeat it again. Dopant will be grown directly on the crystalline site. What it means, it means that no needs of the dopant activations. So, uh, dopant is realized by adding gases or by adding gas uh, containing the dopant such as uh, PH3, B2H6, ASH3, all gas space at room temperatures or we should have PCL3, BCL3, ACL3, uh, all liquid at room temperature. I mean, these are the gases. Uh, I mean, uh, that, that we can utilize, uh, I mean, for the doping purpose. I mean, uh, we should have, I mean, if, if we're trying to do some particular kind of the doping during a particularly, uh, I mean, if we have a particular uh, kind of thin film and we want to have a doping of uh, any type uh, uh, or maybe uh, the type of the materials uh, that we want to have or uh, that we want to dope. Uh, in our synthesize our grown thin film so we can utilize uh, the doping and the either in the gaseous form or maybe in the liquid form at the room temperatures uh, so they will go through uh, i mean so when we once we utilize uh, these dopant either in the gaseous form at room temperatures or a liquid form at room temperature so what will happens uh, they will go through uh, i mean uh, when we utilize them and uh, in any particular conditions that is in a, a gaseous form or in liquid form. So what actually, uh, what will happen next, uh, they will go through uh, dissociations, uh, lattice side incorporations and burying up dopants by other atoms and the film. So but we remember this is not, uh, that's not all, I mean we should also consider about the I mean the uh, the size of the atoms. Uh, I mean, so, uh, which we want to dope, and uh, uh, the atom which we want to replace with the dopants. I mean, there are so many things to consider. But here, so we are. I mean, we are not talking about that. I mean, that will be uh, too precise or too accurate uh, regarding a particular materials. Uh, and so maybe sometime we will discuss that uh, in a particular lectures. It, what are the important things uh, uh, for the doping or what are the essential things for the doping and a particular kind of materials. So the doping concentrations uh, uh, that we denoted uh, by C uh, uh, and P is a partial pressures of the uh, dopant species and V the growth rate. So uh, uh, what it means if let's suppose we, we say that uh, we, we have a particular kind of the dopant uh, and we have a particular concentration of the dopant that we denoted by C and we have a particular pressure, partial pressures of the dopant species and V uh, for a vapor growth rate. So then we can have uh, a mathematical relations for dopant concentrations uh, to that of the partial pressure of the dopant species. And we say that uh, the dopant concentration is proportions to the partial pressure of the dopant species for low growth rate, which in other words, we say that uh, the dopant concentration is proportion to uh, the pressures, the partial pressures divided by uh, the growth rate. I mean, this is something 
a very simple mathematics. So, however, I mean, uh, one thing we should remember that there is also unintentional uh, doping process. I mean, sometimes uh, you know that the chemical process will not be according to our own need or according to our desires. There may be some undesirable effects. That's why we are saying that there might be some unintentional doping process. What it means, it, it means that we should, uh, sometimes it's possible that we might have our diffusions of dopamine from heavily doped uh, substrates into the epitaxial layers or we can have auto doping auto doping mean that we may we might have or we may have dopamine from the substrate uh, that diffuses into the gas stream first uh, then back into the epitaxial layer i mean these are the possibility or the undesired unintentional uh, doping process so uh, let's come towards the uh, type uh, I mean, uh, in our last lecture, uh, we have discussed about different types of the chemical vapor deposition techniques, uh, and we, uh, which we, in which we have discussion about the low pressure chemical vapor deposition technique. So let uh, have a detailed discussion about the low pressure chemical vapor deposition technique. Uh, you know that uh, before low pressure uh, chemical vapor deposition techniques, we have atmospheric. A pressure system or atmospheric pressure chemical vapor depositions and that kind of technique have major drawback. I mean it's, uh, we utilize before uh, low pressure chemical vapor depositions uh, we have atmospheric pressure chemical uh, vapor deposition techniques uh, but we remember atmospheric pressure chemical vapor, uh, vapor deposition have some major uh, drawback. So what are those drawbacks? Uh, those drawbacks include uh, uh, that uh, when we utilize uh, that techniques uh, that is at atmospheric pressure CVD so at high temperatures a horizontal configurations must be used for vapor at a time I mean it was on the disadvantages so at low temperatures the deposition uh, the deposition rate goes down and throughput is again low so the fundamental reasons uh, which I believe uh, for the low uh, uh, throughput of APCVD is that only a small percentage of the gas is uh, reactant gases uh, while the rest carrier uh, which is uh, diluent gases. I mean it's, uh, I mean it's, it's further something uh, which we should consider uh, I mean it's by uh, I mean it's maybe uh, uh, by counting some of the drawbacks of the atmospheric pressure CVD technique. So what it means that I mean it's obvious back now uh, that uh, the solution is to operate at low pressures uh, chemical vapor deposition technique. I mean by by having a look a close look at all these drawback so uh, one may basically think that uh, we should uh, utilize or uh, we should use as a solutions uh, that we should operate the process at a low pressures. So it means that we should utilize low pressure chemical vapor deposition technique. I mean we should go from atmospheric to a low pressure chemical vapor deposition technique. So uh, what is a low pressure chemical severity technique? So uh, what are uh, I mean uh, the apparatus uh, that we utilize in low pressure chemical vapor depositions. So a typical experimental setup that is being utilized a low pressure chemical vapor deposition is shown here by uh, this particular figure. So here you can see that at the top we have we have zone one, zone two. We have different zones, three zones, and all these zones uh, we have heaters uh, upstairs. Uh, I mean they can utilize uh, to, to heat the materials in each zone. I mean if you place the material here at first zone, so you have to utilize this heater. Similarly, if you place material beneath the in this particular zone, so you have to. A switch on this heater similarly uh, this one as well here you have the substrate and here you have to grow the materials you introduce the reacting gas in here from this particular locations and we remember uh, this is uh, the setup this is horizontal quartz steel furnace and this end goes for the exhaust gases I mean it's a brief discussion of the, the setup that we utilize for low pressure chemical vapor a deposition technique so uh, let's have some formal discussions I mean it's uh, some accurate discussion I mean that was some verbal discussions about the setup so let's come towards some accurate discussions uh, that we took from the book 
uh, what actually we have at low pressure chemical vapor depositions uh, reactors, we use a pressures uh, that range from 0 0.25 to uh, 2 tor uh, with a temperature range from 500 to 900 degrees centigrade. Uh, in this kind of the techniques, uh, the transport of the reactants from gas phase to surface uh, through boundary layers is still not, uh, is still not rate limiting, uh, that despite the high temperature. So what actually happens? Uh, so vapors can be stacked vertically for high throughput, that is uh, 10 to uh, 100 to 200 vapors uh, for runs. I mean that is the reason that why we put the vapors uh, vertical. I mean that you should understand here that what is the reasons for uh, putting the, the substrate vertically and low pressure chemical vapor deposition technique. So uh, because of the uh, low pressure chemical vapor deposition technique operates in uh, reaction limited regimes, so it is very sensitive uh, to temperatures and so temperatures need to be controlled closely uh, within uh, plus minus 1 degree centigrade. So use hot wall reactors uh, for this precise controls. I mean uh, this, this, is, this is something very serious and one should look upon when they are utilizing this kind of particular uh, techniques. Again uh, a 5 to 25 degree centigrade temperature gradient is often created uh, to offset sore gas uh, depletion effect or uh, one can use uh, distributed uh, feeding. Uh, be remembers uh, this kind of techniques require no carrier gas and a log waste pressure reduces uh, gas based reactions uh, which causes particle clusters that contaminates the vapors uh, and the system. Uh, less auto doping at low pressures uh, is out diffused doping gas uh, pumped away quickly. So again uh, you can have a look. Uh, for the hot wall case, uh, for the hot wall case, we can have the setup for the low pressure chemical vapor deposition techniques, and you can have it clearly here. Uh, we have the vapors that be vertically arranged. Again, we have the furnace with resistive heatings, and these these are basically the vertically aligned. They're basically the the, the stand up uh, the stand up vapors. So here you can see that uh, uh, we have the setup. This has been a trap. Here we uh, arrange, uh, I mean, uh, it's a vacuum pump creating for uh, the vacuum pump is basically to uh, evacuate the system from the impurity and undesired uh, contaminants uh, and is being through, uh, through the exhaust uh, uh, scrubber. So, possible advantages of low pressure chemical vaporization technique is uh, for too low temperature, deposition rates may be too low, so uh, film quality decreases. Uh, shadowing has mean that less gas phase collisions due to directional diffusions to the surface. So, uh, deteriorations of the uh, stiff coverage and filling. Uh, if we utilize this in the uh, cool wall process, so uh, cool wall process uh, 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 basically seem, uh, uh, seems cool walls reactors also exhaust. A uh, cool wall uh, reduces depositions on the wall. I mean, if we utilize, uh, I mean, here we utilize the hard wall, but instead of the hard wall, if we utilize the cool wall, so what is the advantage of the cool wall? So, it seems, uh, it seems that cool wall uh, reactors also exist. So, what it means, it means that cool wall reduces depositions on the wall. I mean, instead of the hard walls, if we utilize the cool wall, so cool wall is basically, uh, I mean, uh, uh, it reduces deposition on the walls, which leads to depletions of the uh, uh, depositions or uh, species and particles formations that may flex up walls and falls on the vapors. Beside poorer temperatures, control than hot wall, gas convection is another problem. So that, that is all we have for uh, the low pressures chemical vaporization techniques and uh, as comparison with the atmospheric uh, pressures chemical vapor deposition techniques. Uh, this is all for the this lectures. See you in next lectures with more de uh, details about uh, uh, thin film uh, depositions. Uh, 
uh, with some other type of the CVD techniques. Uh, till then, bye bye.